Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Scrappy, the powerful web scraping framework for Python. In this tutorial, we will cover the basis of Scrappy and show you how to use it to extract data from a website. We will actually start by installing Scrappy and setting up a new project. Then we will explore the different components of Scrappy, including the spider, selectors, and item classes. I will also show you how to handle common scraping tags and storing the data in a separate file like JSON files, CSV, and even databases. By the end of this tutorial, you have a solid understanding of how to use Scrappy to extract data from the web. So without any further ado, let's get started. So before we begin, make sure you have Python and Scrappy installed on your computer. You can install Scrappy by running the following command on your terminal. pip install Scrappy and then hit enter. The installation process may take a few minutes to complete. But once it's done and we have Scrappy installed, we're going to start by creating a new Scrappy project. So I'm going to create a Scrappy project in my desktop folder. Then open up the project folder using the VS Code editor. So I'm going to say cd, which is change directory, and then pass in desktop. Now I'm at the desktop folder, and we can also verify that by saying pwd, which is short for print working directory. So now that we are at the desktop folder, let's now create our scrappy project. So to do that, I'm going to say scrappy then start project and then the project name so here you can give it any name of your choice as for me i'm gonna go with scraping ninja and then hit enter all right now our scrappy project has been created and we can have a look of our project in our desktop folder which goes by the name scraping ninja now open your favorite code editor and open up the project folder in the code editor. So our scrappy project is going to look something like this in whatever code editor you are using. However, let's have a look at the website we're going to be extracting data from in this tutorial. So we will be scraping data from the website called codetoscrape.com. I'm going to show you how to extract information from this website using the Scrappy package in Python. So next, we will create a Scrappy spider. A spider is what Scrappy uses to scrape websites. And to create a spider for this project, I'm going to open up my VS Code terminal by clicking on terminal and then click on new terminal. So here is our VS Code terminal. And one thing to note is that Make sure you are inside the project folder, Scraping Ninja. And now, we're going to run the following command on the terminal to create a spider. So, I'm going to say Scrappy Gen Spider. Then, the name of the spider we want to create, which I'm going to say Quotes. And then, I'm just going to copy the web page URL I want to scrape, which is quote to scrapecom and then paste here on the terminal and then hit enter. Now, if we check our project folder under spiders, then we can see that now we have a new file called quotes and this is gonna be our main file we're gonna be working with in this tutorial. So back to our main website, we're gonna be scraping the code from each of these items and then the name of the author, then the tags associated with the codes. So back to my code editor. First, we're going to start by accessing this page using the terminal. I'm going to say scrappy, then shell, and then paste the URL of the web page, and then hit enter. Now we have a new shell terminal which we're going to interact with the page. So back to the web page, I'm going to right click and then click on inspect. So when you are scraping web pages, 
the most common task you need to perform is to extract data from the HTML sources. So, I do recommend you have some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. And now, to get individual text, the name of the author, and then the tags from each item, we're going to use something called selectors from Scrappy. And to use a selector to get the first item, I'm going to use the arrow here from my web browser and then click on the first item. And we can see that it's a div with the class quotes. And here is the second and the rest items with also the class quotes. So let's get the first item. And back to our code editor on the shell terminal, I'm going to say response.css then parentheses and then single quotes. Now we're going to pass in the div with the class quotes. Then finally, we're going to add the dot get method from Scarpy and then hit enter. Now we can see that we get back a piece of HTML code, which is the first item from our website. Here is our quote and we also have the name of the author and also the respective tags associated with the code. Now, let's start by getting the code alone without the HTML code. So, I'm going to get back to my web page. Then, below here is the div tag and we're going to find our code wrapped inside the spam tag. And as you can see, it's of class text. So, back to my code editor. I'm going to say response.css, then we're going to get the spam tag with the class text and then hit enter. Now we get back our code and if you notice, it's also wrapped inside the HTML spam tag. So to remove that, press the arrow key from a keyboard on the terminal to get the previous command. Then we're going to add double column here and then pass in text, then hit enter. Now we get back only the text inside the span tag. So back to our web page, let's actually get the name of the author. So if we check the second span tag, then we see another tag called small and it's of class author. So the name author is wrapped inside the small tag. And we're going to use the class name to scrape the name of the author using Scrappy. Now, back to my code editor. I'm going to press the up arrow key to get the executed code above. And then, instead of getting the tag span with the class text, we're going to pass in the tag small, then the class author, and then hit enter to run the code. Now, we get back the name of the author. So lastly, let's actually write the code to get the tag names from our code. So back to our web page, then we can see that our tags are wrapped inside the div tag with the class name tags. And also the tag is actually the link with the a tag, which also has a class name of tag. So to get this using Scrappy, we're going to grab our div with the class name tags, then our a tag with the class name of tag. So back to our code editor, I'm going to say response.css single quote, then div with the class name tags, space, then the a tag, and add the class name tag. Then we're going to add our double columns and then pass in text and finally add the dot get method and then run the cell. Now we get back the first tag from code. So now let's actually scrape our web pages and get all our data at the same time. And to do that, we're going to create a loop inside our parse function here. So I'm going to say for code in response.css, then pass in div with the class name quote, then a column. So to get our text, I'm going to say quote.css, then 
get the span tag with the class name text, then double column and then pass in text to scrape only the text. Finally, I'm going to pass in the dot get method and then store all of this in a variable called text. Then we have the author name. So I'm going to say quote.css, then pass in the small tag, then the class author, double column, and then get the text. Finally, I'm going to add the .get method. Again, store all of this in a variable called author. Lastly, if we want to get the respective tags, I'm going to say quote.css, then div with the class name tags. Since our tags are actually links wrapped in the tags, I'm going to add space, then the a tag, and add the class name tag, double column, and then get the text. Now, instead of using the dot get method, I'm going to use the dot get all method instead since we have so many tags. So now we're going to create a callback because Scrappy Spider will generate and also represent all of this data in the form of Python dictionary. So I'm going to say yield, then call it brackets. In between the brackets, I'm going to say text, column, then the value text, a comma, then single quote, author, then a column, and then author, then another comma, single quote, then tags, a column, which is also going to be tags. Now, our script is ready to test our web scraping. So first, we have to make sure we exit from the Scrappy shell terminal and then type in Scrappy crawl, then quotes, then minus O, quotes.json to save the file in a JSON file and then hit enter. Now, if we check our product further, then we can see a file created called quotes.json. And as you can see, we have the text and also the name of the author and also the tags associated with the quotes. All of these are saved in the form of a JSON format. And if we notice from our web page, this data is from the first page of the website. And when we click on the next button, then we can see that we also have other data. So we're going to follow the links to get the data from the first five pages. So I'm going to copy this URL and then back to my code editor. I'm going to head over to the start URL and then add a comma, single quote, and then paste the link to the second page. Add another comma, single quote, then paste the link and change the value from two to three. Then a comma, single quote, and then also paste the link and then change the value to four. And lastly, single quote and paste the link and also change the value to to five. Now back to our terminal window, let's scrape the entire first five pages. So I'm going to press the up arrow key from the keyboard to get my previous command and then hit enter. Now we have all the data from the first five pages of our web page. So this wraps up our tutorial on scraping website using Scrappy. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more upcoming tutorials. See you and as always, take care.